Today we're solving linear systems by graphing 3.1. Directions say graph the linear system and estimate the solution, but then check the solution algebraically. A linear system is when you have two or more lines all in the same problem. In this case, we're looking at a graph. So our first step needs to be to graph both of these lines. Then we're going to look to see where they intersect. We already know how to graph lines. I think the easiest way this time is going to be graphing using intercepts. I'll graph equation 1 with a blue line and equation 2 with purple. After I graph my two lines, it looks like the intersection point is right about there, which seems to be at 1, 2, 3 for x, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4 for y. We can check that. In fact, the directions tell us to. We check the solution algebraically by plugging these numbers into both equations. In equation 1, we go 4 times 3 plus negative 4 should equal 8. 12 minus 4 is 8, so that works. Equation 2, we plug in 3 and negative 4 also. That should equal 18. 6 plus 12 is 18. So it works out. So we just solved the system out graphically and checked it algebraically. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can try these later. Next, we've got some vocabulary to look at. When two lines cross and meet at a specific point, we say there's one solution, and we say these are consistent and independent. Independent means only one solution. Consistent means that there is a solution. Sometimes you graph two lines and they're the exact same line on top of each other. We say that's consistent because there is a solution. We say dependent because there's an infinite number of solutions. When you end up graphing two lines that are parallel, they never touch, so we say they're inconsistent. No solutions at all. So we're going to solve this system by graphing and then label them as consistent and independent, which means one solution, consistent and dependent, which means many solutions, or inconsistent, which means no solutions, or in other words, parallel lines. The way we do this, we just graph both lines like we would any other line. I recommend using intercepts. So I'll find my intercepts for equation 1 and 2. Finding my x and y intercepts, before I even graph, I notice that my x and y intercepts are exactly the same for both graphs. I don't even have to graph to know that these are going to be the same line. But we can do it anyway. x is 2 y is negative 2.7. They're both the same line. We call this consistent and dependent. Consistent because there is a solution, dependent because there are many solutions instead of just one. Same idea. We solve the system and then classify using one of our three classifications. So again, we'll find our x and y intercepts for equation 1 and equation 2. Unlike the last example, we can't tell just by looking at it necessarily. They're definitely not the same line. So we're not going to say consistent and dependent. So we have to figure out if these lines are parallel or do they meet somewhere. If they meet somewhere, we've got to find out where. So we have to graph both lines. I'll use blue and green to do that. These lines are parallel. They never touch, so we have no solution. That means we say inconsistent, at which point we're done. If the lines would have intersected somewhere, we'd have to go one step further and figure out where that was. Hey, okay, go ahead and pause the video, read the problem, and try to figure out what your plan of attack is. Looks like we have two scenarios for our possible cost for riding the bus. We should start by identifying some variables. We've got a total cost. And we've got the number of rides that you take. We've got to set up a couple of equations. Using option A, 
looks like our total cost was a monthly pass and pay a dollar per ride. So our total cost would be the monthly pass, which it tells us is $30 plus $1 per ride. Option B, we don't have to buy a monthly pass. We can just pay $2.50 per ride. Total cost would be $2.50 times the number of rides. We want to know how many rides it takes for the total cost of the two options to be the same. So we've got to graph these. Like most word problems, we now have to figure out what a good range for our x values and y values are. Or in this case, it's r values and c values. A good choice for the r values come from our answer choices. Looks like our smallest choice is 12 and our biggest choice is 28. So why not use those for my minimum and max? For my cost, maybe I can figure out how much it costs to ride using option A and option B at both of these inputs. So we'll do that. That will also help us with our graph. If I plug 12 into my first equation, I get 42. If I plug 12 into my second equation, I get 30. So my smallest, my cheapest way to go 12 rides would be $30. So I'll make that my smallest cost. To go 28 rides, using the first option, that would be 58. 30 plus 28 is 58. Or I could do option B, 2.5 times 28 is 70. So my biggest possible cost is $70. So I've got my good ranges for my graph. Now I can draw a picture of my graph. A couple notes on my picture. Again, I use those squiggly lines to represent the fact that I'm not wasting white space. I started my x value at 10 instead of 12 just because it was a nicer number and I could use increments of 5 pretty easily. We came up with some numbers for option A a little earlier. If I plug in my 12, I got 42. And when I plugged in my 30, or no, when I plugged in my 28, I got 58. Those are good points because now I can use them to plot numbers on my graph and draw a line, and I'll do that with green. We also came up with some values for B. When I plugged in 12, I got 30. And when I plugged in 28, it's a bad looking 8. I got 70. So I can plot those points and draw a line using to finish up, I try to figure out where those lines meet. Looks right around 20. Go to my answer choices and see if any of them look right around 20. And one of them does. So after that, after 20 rides, my cost is the same. Which really means, looking at the graphs, if I'm going to take less than 20 rides, the blue line looks like the best choice. Option B, if I'm going to take more than 20 rides, the green line looks the best. If I'm going to take exactly 20 rides, it doesn't matter. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do these later. Other than that, the lesson is done.